Tonight on Hotel Hell, I'm trying to breathe life back into a historic country inn. Yeah, that smells. Shit. The hotel's arrogant owner, Robert Dean II. I've always thought you should live with nice things if you can afford them. Treats the inn like his personal castle and treats his loyal staff with disdain. Go on then, you pompous fuck. Excuse me. Don't talk to me like well, that. Well, what's wrong with it? Is this hotel beyond my help? I'm barely surviving, financially and emotionally. I mean, I'm going to lose everything. The historic Juniper Hill Inn sits on a hilltop above the quaint village of Windsor, Vermont. Built in 1902, the country mansion boasts 28 luxurious bedrooms and two grand dining rooms. It is filled with original works of art and antiques, all museum quality. Antiques dealer Robert Dean II and his boyfriend Ari Nicky bought the business six years ago. I've always thought that you should live with nice things if you can afford them. Oh, that piece looks good there, Robert. I thought you'd like it. The guests that we don't want here are people who don't have a lot of money. The inn may look the part, but despite Robert's dreams of an elite country estate, the hotel is barely functioning. Robert Dean has no hotel or no restaurant experience. The prices may be a little bit high for locals. $350. Two night minimum, so that's $700. $700? The lack of communication is very frustrating. Where are you? And I know the customers see that every day. I need my key too, because at this point, I can't even get in my room. <laughs> With bookings at an all time low, the hotel is in serious financial trouble. But that doesn't stop Robert from living a millionaire's dream. Robert believes this place is his playground. <laughs> <laughs> and a playground for his friends. He's got to have a lot of clothes made by <laughs> He comps all their meals and rooms, but we never get tips. They're having a hard time paying me because they give away all of their money and food to their friends showing off, using this as their private castle. With hardly any paying guests, it's no wonder that this inn is in the red. Yes, we are losing money, more or less like $200,000 a year. I think that the place is going to be closed, and it's, that's very sad. Gordon is going to come into this place and say this place is fucked. If I don't stop this business from bleeding money, it's doomed. I'd love to own an inn in a setting like this. If you get it right, you'd make an absolute fortune. Before I get to Juniper Hill, I want to find out what the townsfolk think of the local inn. Hello. How are you? Very well, and yourself? Yeah, very well, thank you. I've been driving all morning. Um, how's Juniper? Hell in. You're gonna love it. It's beautiful. And um, reputation? It tends to be a little on the high end for our area. Okay. But I would love to have a place to go to locally. Do they not invite locals up there? I feel um, that I'd be interrupting. I feel like I'd be intruding. Oh, really? What a shame. Thank you so much. Have a great Best day and, and welcome you. to Windsor. Thank you very much indeed. Take Enjoy care. Enjoy your darling. visit. Thank you. Here we are. Juniper Hill Inn. Now, who in the hell would bring an RV all the way up here and not stay in that stunning hotel? Look at it. My God, that's beautiful. Wow, OK, around to the front door. Can't believe they haven't cleared the snow for a guest to come in. Wow. Oh. You're kidding me. It's locked. That's not very welcoming. Why would you have a big mansion that guests can't arrive through the front fucking door? Jesus, who wants to enter through the back door? Mr. Ramsey's here. I need you to do room one right away. At least this door's open. Finally! Hello there. How are you? How are you, Mr. Ramsey? Black Gordon, please. Oh, oh Bloody Gordon. hell, what a nightmare. I'm what Robert Dean. Robert Dean. We, uh, were you over there? I, I was at the front door, yes. OK, this is actually our entrance. And in the winter, because of snow, really? we have to keep that locked. Because otherwise, the snow load comes off and kills people. Kills people? Yeah, it can. Have you killed anyone so no. far? No. <laughs> Where's all this stuff from? Um. 
An aftermath of an antiques fair. Yeah. This looks like it could be a beautiful room, but you can't tell because it's stuffed with so much clutter. That's the reception desk? No. My God, so what is that? That is our bar right now. You are kidding me. This is the bar? Yes. With what, that? Martinis. Martinis. Oh, yeah. God bless him. <laughs> Uh, made of pigs. Pig martini. Well, we have three rescue pot-bellied pigs. You have three pigs here? Right. What is that for? Were you born with this in your mouth? Yeah, don't I wish. Honestly? Uh, actually, no, that was a gift from... A uh, giant. So, yeah. <laughs> Robert obviously loves to show off all his expensive antiques, but as a guest, I don't feel comfortable. I feel like I'm in a museum. This is the main formal dining room. This big chair here is for, for one. Uh, just kind of, we're known as a romantic destination and... Uh, <laughs> just out of interest, how Well, we would move the table. Uh, move it in for me, please? Yes. Wow, so you've got a sofa on the table. We thought it was kind of nice to have, like, a cosy banquette. Oh. Well, three U.S. presidents have dined here. Oh, really? Which ones? Uh, Teddy Roosevelt, Calvin Coolidge. Teddy Roosevelt dined in here? Wow. I wanted to try to give him a little bit of sense of the history, but Juniper Hill. Wow, okay, so that's the dining room. Well, we have two dining rooms. Oh, God, you must be busy with two dining rooms. Well, I wish we were busy. Bloody hell. We have spurts of being incredibly busy. Right. Uh, where we lack is all the other times. Really? Yeah. This place looks like a millionaire's mansion, not a struggling business. I've got to scratch beneath the surface. This place per week uh, is turning how much? We're lucky if we're doing, you know, 15,000 a month. What does it cost to keep the place open? 30. Really? Yep. So you're losing $200,000 a year? It's been a nightmare. We maintained our room rates, thinking that the economy wouldn't be this long a haul. But we've all experienced those kind of difficulties, and myself included, but you, you navigate your way out of that recession. Point. Unfortunately, my partner lost his job. We expected him to have his job for a little longer. He must have gained a substantial payoff or retirement. It's all been put into this. How much? Over a million dollars. A million dollars? Into this already? Yes. And does he have an active role in the business? He tries to maintain the accounting, mm -hmm. and he helps just about with everything. Uh, we're in trouble. Trouble? You'd never guess from the look of this place. It's more like Buckingham Palace than Skid Row. Do you know what, um, Robert, honestly, I'd like to go straight to my room if you wouldn't okay. mind, please. All right. Wow. Uh, this place goes on. It does. It's the largest colonial revival mansion in New England. And more paintings. Wow. And you're in the Maxwell Everett Suite, which is the original. Um, OK. Wow, beautiful room. And, uh, uh, I mean, this is, uh, this is a beautiful room, but what is that smell? I mean, seriously. It, it does smell. Yeah, but it smells like shit. I mean, that is horrific. Oh, my god. It smells like sewage. Coming up, Robert's staff turn on him. I'm supposed to tell you the truth, right? The truth is all I want to know. I'm telling you exactly how I feel and how the people that I work with feel. The entire staff is ready to walk out. You can talk to him. He's your fucking chef. I'm beyond angry. I'm beyond pissed off. And I have to step in. How dare you? You still haven't got it. Get your head out of your ass and start getting a little fucking real. Excuse me. Go on, then, you pompous fuck. I'm at Vermont's Juniper Hill Inn, and I've just met its owner, Robert Dean II, who's filled his hotel with expensive art and antiques. Were you born with this in your mouth? But he can't fill his rooms, and his business is struggling. You're losing $200,000 a year. It's been a nightmare. And no wonder, because although the room he's put me in looks nice... Beautiful room. ...it has one major drawback. What is that smell? It smells like raw sewage. We had a plumbing issue, and It's like someone's it's... shot under the bed and... Um... How much? This room goes for $350 a night. $350 a night for a room that smells of shit? Well... You're kidding me. We haven't rented it, though. Bloody hell. It's been out of use for, um, four months. Four months? Yeah. Oh, come on. It has been. This is crazy. It is crazy. It doesn't make sense. I've got to get out of here. It stinks of shit. Is there another room, Yes, please? I have room, too. Bloody yeah. hell. I didn't realize... $350 to be caked in shit? Wow, it's gorgeous. And this one doesn't smell like crap. I'm gonna quickly um, unpack and then I would um, I would like to have a um, a quick bite of lunch. Okay, I'll, yeah? tell, I'll notify the chef. What channel. time is the restaurant closed for lunch? I know well, it's we actually don't serve lunch normally, but we're happy to prepare you something. <laughs> is that a joke? We, we serve breakfast no, no, and dinner. Stop, 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 stop. You don't actually serve lunch. 
now. The restaurant's closed for lunch. Yes. If someone requests lunch, we'll make lunch for them. But could you uh, prepare lunch for me? Uh, yes, I can. I'll tell the chef. Please. Okay. Uh, thank you. Yes. Not open for lunch. Gordon is going to want lunch. Huh? Gordon wants lunch. What am I supposed to do with that information? Hmm. That was a welcome breath of fresh air on the back of that disgusting smell of crap in that room. I can't believe it. And the rooms are gorgeous, and yet how could you have a room that has been smelling for months that bad, and then he sticks me in it? What a muppet. Despite the hideous smell in that first guest room, I've still worked up quite an appetite. Hello. Hi, how are you? Barbara. Barbara, how glamorous are you? I'm nice to see you. Likewise. I have a mad crush on Gordon, as he knows I'm a cougar. <laughs> how old are you now? I, oh, don't You're say. not old. Last week I turned 70. You're kidding me. You look you a million dollars. You have made my year. 70. Watch out, Joan <laughs> Collins, I'm telling you now. <laughs> Bloody hell. <laughs> Barbara, what's wrong with this place? Well. In a nutshell. Don't get any people. Mm -hmm like pulling teeth to get my paycheck. You don't get paid? It takes forever to get my paycheck, and when I do, it's usually something's left out. But hold on a minute, you, you don't get paid, and when you do... Not, at, not on time, we're supposed to get paid every two weeks. So what do you earn a fortnight? I made 6,000 this year. $6,000 a year? That's ridiculous. You know, you gotta have the money flowing, and it's almost come to a standstill at this point. My last paycheck was $48. Unbelievable. Rob has obviously got enough money to fill the guest rooms with fine art and antique furniture. But he doesn't pay his staff. And um, I'm starving. What would you recommend? The crab cakes with a little salad. So this is the dinner menu. OK, because we're not open for lunch. Right. And the lamb sounds great as well. You want the lamb? Yeah. All right. Darling, is this a uh, prefix menu? Or... Yeah. Because mm -hmm. there's no prices on here. What sort of restaurant doesn't have prices on the menu? It's like a club for millionaires where, if you have to ask, you can't afford it. I've got a supplement of $15 from the lamb. It's How enough, much is... Enough charge for the lamb. Is Robert nearby? How much is it for three courses? $59. $59. So if we had the lamb... It would be... 74 People are horrified at the price of the food. This is why a lot of people think that Juniper Hill is snobbish. When we typically take a reservation, we will tell people it's a three-course meal. But that's for the residents. I'm talking about a local coming in here. We're reservation only, though, so nobody walks in. We don't what? have walk-in. How can you expect to appeal to the locals? Um, we haven't identified the appropriate people to come here, or... Hold on a minute. What do you mean, appropriate people? Hold on. People who can afford $59 for three courses. Appropriate people? What a snob. Where does he think he is? The Ritz? And where's your and... table? Which one's your table? Uh, well, most of the time I eat in our RV, our motor coach. Say that again? Oh, we have a motor coach to the side. Price, and where'd it come from? Is it yours? You rent it? Uh, yeah, it's ours. We, I mean, we owe on it, but we bought it. and We bought, bought it? Yeah. How much was that? Over $100,000. $100,000? You're three years away from 50. You should not be living in an RV. We don't live in uh, an RV. Um, it is a motor coach, which is the higher-end version of an RV. It is that psychological break for us, and it gives me a place to relax and kind of unwind. I actually love it. I could live there the rest of my life, to be honest with you. It's quiet, it's clean. I suppose if this place doesn't get fixed, then you might be in there full-time, yeah. I've just sat down for lunch at the Juniper Hill Inn. Hello. And already I've found out the staff aren't paid on time. Like pulling teeth to get my page. And the owners live in a camper outside. How much was that? Uh, over $100,000. This place is baffling. I hope the food makes more sense. Excellent. <laughs> wow. Where are the crab cakes? Oh, that's in there, underneath there. Are they mini crab cakes? Are we, uh... The chef has decided that those are the size that he needs to serve. Mm-hmm. I mean, that tastes dreadful. That thing tastes sort of washy and soapy. And $20 for that? He's as cheap with his crab cakes as he is with his staff. Wow. Now for the lamb, with Robert's ridiculous $15 extra charge. It's um, a rack really of lamb natural. encrusted in macadamia nuts, uh, fresh herbs, and a little bit of Dijon mustard. It's served with a honey vinegar reduction. It's not even cooked properly. Rest it and take that off. 
I always get nervous when you see white fat like that on the side of the chop. Is it to your liking? I mean, it's pretty raw in the center. You like the flavor of it, though, the honey curry? No, way too no. sweet. I, I'm, I'm not satisfied with uh, the quality of the food that's coming out of the kitchen. I believe our chef has a learning curve to be well, where he needs to be. Thank you. <laughs> we just lost our other chef. Why? Why did the chef leave? I'm supposed to tell you the truth, right? The truth is all I want to know. Why did the chef leave? Well, her paycheck. Mm. She put all her, everything on her uh, charge cards, and, and she just figured she wasn't paid back for what she... The chef bought produce. She did, she did everything. She was the best chef ever. Barbara, that's dreadful. I'm starving. Um, the peanut butter chocolate decadence, uh, I could do with some of that. Pick me up, please. Thank you. God. A chef that left because she had to buy produce on her own credit card. I mean, this guy's priorities are upside down. A bit like this inn. OK, are you ready? This, he said, he doesn't care for the sweetness, there's fat around it. He didn't care for the flavor of the honey gar. Wow. Thank you very much. Uh, did you cut it in half? Because it looks like someone's taken it. And where's the other half gone? Uh, it goes to the another person who orders. Oh, no, I want my other half. $74. This place is insane. Listen, half my dessert's missing. If you think I'm spending $74 for a dessert that is half cocked. Mm. It's actually quite nice. There is hope. I'm sorry. You like I'm, I'm going to say that that is not a dessert that he made. Barbara made it. No. Nope. Somebody else makes desserts. It's ordered. Like store bought? Like through one of our purveyors. What? Where's the chef? He's in the kitchen. Can you get him out, please? Yes. What? How you doing, chef? Julian, in my opinion, is not living up to his potential as a chef. He will try to cut corners, and I think Gordon needs to know these things. I've just spent $74 for three plates of absolute dire, dated shit food. Crab cakes? Yes, sir. You can't put two little half testicle-sized fucking crab cakes that came from a can. There's bigger fucking cakes, chef, at a fucking canopy party. My lamb was cold in the middle, the fat was white, it was almost like a mouthful of sugar. The best tasting dish for me was the fucking chocolate peanut thing that I got served half a portion that's not even made fucking in-house. What is this? There's no synergy here. There is honestly a lack of communication often. Sometimes when I'm in the middle of doing breakfast service for the 10 people that we randomly get, I get five texts from him asking me a question. So why are you texting him? If you have a question, I'd you like should you maybe show me leave the RV and come out show, and talk to show us. Show me those texts. Are you nitpicking? Are you trying to control him? Are you... No, I'm trying to make sure I, I'm, I haven't been sleeping very well, to be honest with you, and uh, I've, had, I've been beaten down. I'll take responsibility for everything that happens in the kitchen. You don't own the place. You own it, yet he's acting more responsible. What do you own a week, if you don't mind me asking? $1,000? Before taxes, $400. Jesus Christ almighty. $400 a week to be the head chef in a luxury hotel. That's insane. I mean, you're barely surviving. I'm, I'm, I don't know that I'm even barely surviving. If you're not happy with your work environment, you should leave. Are you taking the piss or is this just an abuse for you? What are you doing to these people? This is their livelihoods. This is your responsibility. Rob's world. And you're in an RV, a hundred grand. Everybody is disgusted that you live in that thing. They really are. Because it costs so much money and they can't get their paycheck on time. Well, that is not the that is that not is the part case. of the issue. But we are was... surrounded by wealth and reminded of poverty at the same time because of that RV. Well, it's a symbol. To me, that RV is a symbol. And it's a symbol that you're separating yourself from everybody else. I'd be very careful about coming down on me too hard. I'm telling you exactly how I feel and how me, the people that I work I with feel. feel. Let me tell you how I feel. Tell when me. you're in your fucking kitchen all day long and you're on the goddamn internet instead of actually trying to perfect a menu and get a menu, how long did I ask for you to make a menu of your own? And if I'm on the computer, usually as I'm trying to research menus, oh, research please. ingredients. Give me a break. 
I've given you plenty of breaks. I work very long days, yeah. and I haven't been paid in three weeks. There's only been one paycheck that I got on time. Almost the entire staff is ready to walk out because they are tired of not getting paid. Anything to say? No, we, we do things. Oh, please. It's my first day at Vermont's Juniper Hill Inn, and the battle between the chef and the owner... I'd be very careful about coming down on me too hard. ...has turned what should be a charming country inn into a war zone. I'm telling you exactly how I feel. I work very long days, yeah. and I haven't been paid in three weeks. There's only been one paycheck that I got on time. Almost the entire staff is ready to walk out because they are tired of not getting paid. Anything to say? No. We're tired, and half the team is broke. I'm beyond angry. I'm beyond pissed off. Well, I just got a new asshole ripped to me. Gordon says that I live in a fantasy world and that uh, I live in a million dollar RV while our, our, our employees can't pay their bills and all of this kind of stuff because we don't pay them on time. And they're all complaining that they haven't gotten their paychecks this time either. Oh, they haven't. And he said that everything is all about me. I can't believe what a mess this place is. I've got to get off this hill for a bit. There's someone I need to see. Hello, is that Lida? It's Gordon Ramsay. I've got some questions about Robert and Juniper Hill. Would you mind if I pop over for five minutes, please? Great. I'll see you then. Thanks, Lida. I think the old chef that quit will be able to give me some insight into what's wrong with Juniper Hill. Good to see you. Good to see you. Come on in. Give me a little insight to what it was like actually working there. I have to say it was a very interesting five years. Uh, things were going very, very well. And then all of a sudden, two years into it, they stopped answering the phone. Hmm. Robert, I think, thought he was too important to answer the phone or he was too busy doing other things. So preoccupied and distracted. Very, in way that... very preoccupied and distracted and not focused at all on maintaining his own business. Wow. I was getting cut out of a living when they did all this stuff. I used to earn forty, fifty thousand dollars in one restaurant, and now I'm down to earning uh, fifteen. Were you paid on time? Um, not very often. Wow. Um, did you ever use your own money to buy things? All the time. And then I would have to demand to be paid back, or we weren't going to open for dinner. It's insane. Barbara's been shorted checks a lot. She's barely earning hundred dollars a week. Can yeah, you? and he won't pay. Her. And then if he had a private party with all his friends, he didn't tip them. You're kidding me. No. That's just disgusting. I mean, I, that's where I, I draw that. You can't do that. No. You just can't treat people like that. Now, no. he's a confirmed snob, and he thinks he's above yeah. the town. He thinks he's untouchable. I'm here to make this place work. Um, yeah. The first thing I'm going to do is burst his bubble. I'd like to be a fly on that wall, but... Would, would, <laughs> would you come back and walk through the doors to have a look at it at the end of the week and just come back for dinner? No. No, just won't go or... No, I'm not even interested in getting in. I, I just fear getting in one more battle with Ari or Robert. And, what a shame, um, after five years. Yeah. Do you think I've got a chance of saving it? The problem he has now is nobody will work there. You know, I'm there to get this place turned around. Uh -huh. um, those staff deserve a better future. They do. You know, I, I feel terrible for them. Um, listen, thank you. You're very welcome. Um, appreciate your time. Enjoyed it. Thanks, Lida. Likewise. Nice to meet you. Good to see you too. Bye bye. Bye bye. How sad is that after five years of her life dedicated to the Juniper Hill? You know, she won't even step foot in the door. She doesn't want to even see them. The old chef left because she couldn't stand it, and the current chef looks like he's ready to walk too. I wonder if everyone here is feeling the same frustration. Jennifer, what you, what's wrong with the place? What's wrong with the place? We're lacking uh, paychecks on time. Paycheck? You don't get paid on time either? No. We're missing basic supplies too. Basic supplies? We don't even have, I mean, Noel purchased guest checks for us today so that uh, we've been using scrap pieces of paper. First name is? I'm Ryan Keith. Ryan Keith. So what'd you do? I'm the estate manager here. I do all the maintenance on the house. I've done everything here, though. That's why he likes me to spread out my talents to mm -hmm. try and help anybody wherever they need help. How's morale? Not good. <laughs> I personally haven't been paid since the 6th of January. Here it is the 1st of February. That's nearly a month, and 
You pay the employees before paying your bills, when they've done the work. That's their livelihood. I'm amazed you're still here, working as hard as you are. Because staff never need to be treated like this, let me tell you. It's always as if what you're saying to him doesn't get through because he sees you as not an equal. He treats me like that, and that really bothers me because I feel like I've contributed a lot. It's actually pretty degrading. This is insane. Coming up, oh my god. I uncover the shocking extent of Robert's reckless spending. Thousands of dollars worth. Hundreds of thousands of dollars. Robert's dreadful communication skills cause a meltdown. I said, where does this chicken go? Ask him again! Tempest Flair. Excuse me. One. I am the boss. And Robert reveals his true colors. How dare you! I'm shocked with what I'm finding at the Juniper Hill Inn. Owner Robert wants to kill his chef. How long did I ask for you to make a menu of your own? And the rest of the staff want to kill Robert. How's morale? Not good. Estate manager Ryan has told me about some of the problems, but I now he wants to show me. If you want to see the root of the problem, let's go to the basement. <laughs> to the basement? Yes, please. Jesus, what's in there? Everything. Oh, really? It's the majority of it is personal items. Not even the shelves are all lined. Bloody hell. Look at this place. Oh, my God! Look at this stuff. Stereos, wine racks, quilts, chairs, tables, copper pans, more chairs over there. Look at these. Robert prides himself on having to have the very best of everything. Christ, there's enough in here to open three restaurants. Is all this stuff still brand new? Most of it is brand new. Littered with thousands of dollars. Robert's got so much stuff, he could furnish a dozen houses. But he doesn't pay his staff. It's crazy. Where are we going? Brace yourself. We're going up to the office. You're kidding me. Oh, no. Please come come on. in. This is the office? This is the office. You're kidding me. Not at all. I wanted you to see. Jesus Christ. It scares me half to death. Oh, my God. This is insane. It would only take a day or two to sort out this hoarder's heaven. But Robert's left it in chaos. No wonder he spends all day hiding in his RV. This guy has lost the plot. This is disturbing. Please tell me there's no more. Yes, there's more. This is where the pigs are kept. <laughs> At least they look happy. Hey. Pigs who live a life of luxury while everyone around them suffers. Sounds strangely familiar. Bloody hell. So the owners live out, the pigs live in. There's more. So check out the storage units. Storage units? You are kidding me. No. Oh, my god. This one's all personal items. Look at oh, this. Jesus. I mean, I swear to God, it's like a special edition of Hoarders. I mean, honestly. Wow. I'm in shock. You know that. And this one? All of this entire storage unit is full of chairs. Oh, my God. Look at this stuff. Honestly. I mean, they must be packed with thousands of dollars worth of Hundreds of thousands of dollars. How much stuff does one need? Bloody hell. I can't believe how much stuff Robert has bought. He must have spent a fortune. I've got to meet Robert's partner, Ari, and find out why he's financing all this. Welcome, welcome. welcome. My name's Ari. It's a pleasure. Yeah. Please. Um, my God. So, how much money have you put into this business personally? More or less uh, over a million dollars. A million dollars? And how much have you seen back? Nothing. Hmm. It was all my, my uh, severance packages, my income that I when I was working, and then my retirement plans. Robert's savings are in artwork uh, and antiques. I have supporting this in with my, my savings. Clearly, this is a beautiful place. But putting your entire life savings into a sinking ship is insane. And with Robert at the helm treating his staff so poorly, I don't see things getting any better. Robert is in a fantasy world, and I've been struggling all day to get through to him. This place, it's dreamland, a playground for your boyfriend, Robert. Your biggest problem mm -hmm. is not Juniper Hill. Your biggest problem is fucking Robert. I'm at Vermont's Juniper Hill Inn and I've just had a difficult conversation with Robert's partner, Ari, who seems strangely unconcerned about how bad things really are here. How much money have you put into this business personally? More or less uh, over a million dollars. A million dollars? And how much have you seen back? Nothing. Hmm. But I've tried to make him see who's to blame for the problems. Your biggest problem is fucking Robert. 
Dinner time is approaching. Word has spread about me being at the inn, and the place is bustling. Good to see you. Hello Hi. there. Hey. <laughs> nice to see yeah. you. I'm learning a lot about why the inn is struggling by watching Robert and Ari deal with the new influx of guests. Anyone with any restaurant experience would stagger the seating of guests. But as if they're just welcoming people to a dinner party at a Hello. private house. Hello there. How are you? Robert and Ari see everyone at once. There in the corner. Make pretend you're back in 1902. It's a, meant to be a relaxed evening. And Order in. And that's a recipe for disaster for Chef Julian and the wait staff. Chef, I'm making a change on 21. Write it down. Don't tell me. Just write it down. It's an order. Are you guys kidding me with all these orders? Who said everybody at once like this? Do we don't know about pacing? Who's yeah, yeah. <laughs> writing the tickets? Do you mean, I mean table four, table five? Some of them have names on them, some of them do not. Who wrote that ticket? There's not even a table number on there. Table four. They just got their lobster. Where's table 23? They've got I need one person at a time. Table I need less 20. talking in the kitchen, please. Table 23 has got Every time no I food. I put something up the window, eight people ask me for something. With Julian having been slammed by the owner's dreadful seating, Ari isn't helping the strained atmosphere with an awkward art lesson. But then, like, this this is from 1800, and it was painted for an uh, opera house, because you know what it is. What is it? Come on. Everybody has to know what that is. It's a handball going across oh, yeah. the Alps with the white elephants. Oh. Everybody should know that. <laughs> <laughs> On the other side of the house, Robert's also busy giving a lecture. This is one of the original signs to the house. There's a lot of history here. Um, Teddy Roosevelt actually was best friends with the man, or a very good friend with the man who actually built the house, Maxwell Evart. Do you always get this backed up? I mean, yes. Yeah? When I have poor seating, Robert has groups of his friends come in, sitting at once. OK, <laughs> so you're waiting for your starters then? Yes. OK, yep. well, l let me uh, check on those for you. OK, and see how thank it's you. OK, yeah. Robert. Yes. This ticket system is bollocks, you know that? Handwritten tickets, no time on there, no proper dates, no coordination. Who trains the front of house team? Who's in charge of the restaurant? Who, who is that? Uh, I would be the host, and then... You'd be the host? Yes, the chef takes over the kitchen. This place is such a mess. Clearly, Robert has no idea how to run a hotel. Yeah, uh, I've got a I lost, uh, so, Me too. Yeah, go I'm on, trying what's to matter? straighten out the damn drinks, because they lose, we lost 30-something drinks. Oh, my God. Robert, we lost 30 drinks. At least. I often find drinks not written down or just a, a lack of follow through. And it's a big problem when we're trying to make money. There's no communication between the bar and the dining room. So people get served drinks, but no one remembers to charge for them. But we're losing big money. No kidding. And they're losing their checks. And I'm going crazy trying to figure out a system. They have hardly any guests and don't charge the ones they do have. No wonder this place is in the red. How does that happen? But they're supposed to write the drinks down and then apply them to a table and a room and then they go into the computer. The ticket system is bogus, and as I feared, seating everyone at once is already causing problems for the staff and the guests. Yeah. It's not very warm. Yeah. It's burnt. With guests now suffering and the kitchen falling apart from Robert's ill-managed seating, yeah. come on, I have to step in. Um, just, to, just stop there. You have to be fucking kidding me. This goose liver is burnt to a cinder. Stop. Julian, yes, sir. come around, buddy. I know we're in the shit and we're busy. Food's dying in the window. A foie gras salad. I mean, honestly, it's like a piece of fucking beef jerky. Where's Ari? Get me Ari, urgently. I mean, honestly, come on, guys. Hello. I stopped that. I just said what no. That? What is that? What is that? Foie gras. Well, that's foie gras. Mm. That is not foie gras. It's, it's not funny, guys. No, that is not funny. I mean, I know we're in the ship, but does anyone have any standards here? Yes. Well, can I see them? Yes. Can I see something to hold on to? Because right now, I just want to get out of here. I can only be as good as I am with the tools that I have. I'm embarrassed, and I know that I can do better. I know the staff can do better. First off, no more fucking tickets in the kitchen. Give him 10 minutes to catch up, OK? All right. And Robert, is it possible for the first time, put the phone away, get your jacket off and fucking dig deep a little bit, yeah? Please? Yeah? Somebody? I'm concerned that food is in the window and it's just dying. Entrees on table six are in the window. 
Entree, send them. They should be sat here. I'm, I... How am I supposed to do everything back are you, here? Are, are you with me? I'm with are you. Are you an owner? I'm with you. Are you an entrepreneur? I keep trying to, you know. You can why talk is to him. He's your fucking chef. Well, when I try to communicate, he says, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. I can't do it. No, he doesn't. I fucking do find it. your balls and tell him you need to talk to him. I found my balls. Do I want him to walk out? Well, he's not going to walk out if you communicate with him. Talk to him then. Well, I have been trying to. So when he finishes it. Send the fucking food. There's always a third dish not ready or a fourth dish. Well, it not must ready. be one or two minutes behind, but unless you fucking ask, how are you supposed to fucking know? I have been asking. I said, where's this chicken? So ask food? him again! It's the middle of dinner service at Juniper Hill Inn, and Chef Julian is drowning under a flood of orders. How am I supposed to do everything back here? Owner Robert has finally decided to get his hands dirty to try and help, but he's utterly incapable of communicating with his chef. When he finishes it, send the fucking food. There's always a third dish not ready or a fourth dish. Well, it must ready. be one or two minutes behind, but unless you fucking ask, how are you supposed to fucking know? Where is the soup go, Jillian? Table 23. Okay. I just told you one minute ago. I need foie gras. Where I know, I have it right behind me. I All right, well, you see how. Okay. Julian. Yes. That's what you call communication. It's better communication. That's yes. what you call communication, Robert. There's a difference between interrupting and no communication. And when you fucking put those entrees up there, you make sure they go. You've got to start stepping up and fucking dictating a little bit, because this is just madness. I agree. Jesus Christ. It was fuck ups from start to finish, and it was a clusterfuck, and Gordon saw that. Dreadful. With an owner and chef so incapable of communicating with each other, it's no surprise the diners are unhappy, and they're not the only ones. While Robert and Ari are living the dream, their staff are living a nightmare. Hopefully, by gathering everyone in one room, okay. I can get to the root of the problem. I've never seen a hotel and inn in such disarray. There needs to be structure, and there isn't structure. It's just like a scramble. It's a mess. There was no order in the kitchen. Nobody took responsibility for any one thing. No one has been taught any standards in any department. Really, it's like I'm, I'm racing from thing to thing. Nobody knows what the other ones do it. There's nobody here that is in control, willing to take charge. I did 40 fucking dinners by myself tonight. I could help you, and you've Excuse never me. asked. Oh, yeah. I can cook the rack of lamb. Excuse me. Bragging about Excuse making me. one plate is nothing to brag about. Excuse me. Excuse me. I am the boss. You can't call yourself the boss if you don't fucking pay them. I mean, honestly, do you think that's normal, Ari? Do you think that's the way to look after your team? Every pay period, there is a problem with the checks. Every pay period, there's and a problem it, with the checks. And a lot of I don't know what the problem is, but I know it's the same two people And do you get it. to know about it first, or do you have to go ask him for your salary? I always ask for it. That's absolutely wrong. And the reason is... He's lying. I'm, no, 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 he's not lying. I would rather have them wait than write a check that's going to bounce. What? Because I don't... How about telling him it's not going to be ready, rather than having to ask, like some skivvy? Cap in hand, please, sir. May I get paid? Anybody else have to wait? Yes. Mm -hmm. How long? Five days more. I have to see Barbara? I, I had to wait five weeks. You had to what? I had to wait five weeks before I got a paycheck. Five weeks? Mm -hmm. Guys, you come in and you work your ass off. The least these two guys can do is pay your fucking salary on time. I don't have a secretary, Gordon. I'm sorry. I'm trying to communicate with brides. I'm trying to send out things. I have to have peaceful time in order to do my work. Are you always this pathetic? I am not pathetic. Well, when are you going to stand up and start showing some respect for your team and start growing a pair to sort of understand the mess you're in? I understand the mess we're in. Right. I'm fighting for the team. You dug the fucking hole. Yes, we and did. And put them in it. So they're fucked. They don't have to work here. Oh, my God. I mean, God. you know, the bottom line is... Oh, how dare you? No, they but don't have to work paycheck. here. How dare you? How fucking dare you? They don't have to work here. Oh, my God. I... 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 You can't, disrespectful, can't. disgusting man. They don't have to work here. I don't think you realise how fucking lucky you are. Because if it wasn't for one, two, three, four, five, six of them, You'd be driving that RV miles away from here. Robert definitely needs a reality check. It's life or death right now. And I don't think he actually realizes what kind of jeopardy this place is in. It's not all about you, Robert. Robert's world, Robert's bubble, Robert's dream. You're not the Lord of the Manor, and you're not the Great Gatsby. You're, 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 you're Robert. 
There's only me in here. Excuse thinks... me, excuse me. Go Why? on then, you pompous fuck. Excuse me. Don't talk to me like well, that. Well, what's wrong with it? I want to know what's Don't wrong with it. Don't speak to me like that. Well, I'm that. telling you, you get your head me. out of your ass and start getting a little fucking real. You still haven't got it that this place is sinking. Start paying a little bit more attention to the guys on the ground. Understand how hard it is out there. Forget your fucking antique roadshow and start from the bottom running this business. You're right, there's no structure. It's fragmented. The team needs a leader. They need a structure. They need a mentor. They need some support. And all they get is nitpicks. What kind of motivation is that? All I've heard since I've been here is that you're just blaming people. Well, I'm blaming you for not taking charge. Get fucking real. Tonight, I'll be trying to bring a haunted hotel back to life. There's a little girl who supposedly haunts the hotel. Shit. The hotel's ex-military owner. I'm the owner, I'll say that's how we're gonna do it. Runs the hotel like a dictatorship. Oh, you're like a little fucking Hitler around here. Damn it, he's wrong. Can I save a marriage in crisis and rescue a hotel on the brink of disaster? We're gonna make it go. Or we're gonna shut it up. Sell the place. Sell it. Because this is madness. This is the historic Cambridge Hotel in upstate New York. It's set in stunning countryside, a few hours drive from Manhattan. The hotel has 16 bedrooms and a large restaurant and has had its doors open for almost 150 years. Welcome to the Cambridge Hotel. Ex-military man and local lawyer, John Imhoff, persuaded his family to help him buy the hotel in 2007. I remember sitting in my hot tub, smoking a cigar, drinking bourbon, and life was good and I wanted to take my wife someplace nice for dinner. So I said to her, why don't we buy the Cambridge Hotel and then we'd have a place to go. He must have hit me at a weak moment because I said, sure. Yuck. With zero hospitality experience between them. Which one is A27? I don't, I don't know the numbers. The hotel currently falls shockingly short of guest expectations. It's dingy nasty. and there's hair all in through here. All over these pillows. Be nice if we had a remote control. There's just gobs of hair. We've had remote control since when, the 70s? I'm not sleeping here, we're checking no out. No way, it's bad. When I bought the hotel, I didn't intend to be a hands-on owner, but I am always at the hotel doing something. One person has to be in charge. Got 84 emails, 17 from John. John is a control freak. How are we doing on that chicken? <laughs> it's working hard. We can do better, chef. It's ready to murder him. With this menu, there's a lot of restrictions to it. Our budget's really tight. The creativity has kind of gone out the window. Britt, um, all the rooms clean? Yeah. All the rooms coming in. I am currently the general manager. X. I'll finish this one. But John takes away my control. I have no control. But General John's hands-on approach isn't working. Nobody wants to stay, and the hotel is losing thousands of dollars every month. John wants to put every penny that we have into this hotel, and that is something I am no longer willing to do. We are $750,000 in debt. But failure is not an option, and I don't intend to fail at the hotel. Unless I can fix things, and fast, John and Tina will lose their business and their home. If Gordon Ramsay can't fix us, who the hell else can? Wow, the real sense of grandeur. Definitely some history here. Cambridge Hotel, established 1885, home of Pyle and Mode. I've been across America, I did not realize it came from here. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Cambridge Good to Hotel. Good to see you. Uh, Gordon. And your first name, sorry? My name is Brittany. I'm the Brittany. manager. I have you in room mm -hmm. 117. That is $105 mm -hmm. during the weekday and $135 on the weekend. OK. I think Gordon's first impression of the hotel is going to be, what the fuck are these people doing? The Cambridge Hotel, RIP. Yes. Seriously? Yes. It's died, you mean? No. Rest in peace is the ghost 
that ha live here. We are haunted. Oh, come on. There's a little girl who supposedly haunts the hotel. Alice. Alice. Oh my good yeah. God, she yeah. looks like something out of The Exorcist. She was four years old in 1913. When she died? But I believe in ghosts at the hotel. I absolutely believe in them. I'm gonna go yeah. up the stairs. They're creaky as well. And, oh God. Uh, are they the owners? No, I don't know who they are. Those have been are. here. This place is littered with freaky pictures. Yes. What's upstairs there? That is our third floor. Why is that roped off? Do because it is not accessible to our guests. Is that where the ghosts are? Well, that's where people say they are. If he goes up on the third floor, he is going to freak out. This is your room. Oh my God, bloody hell. Look at the wallpaper. What's the uh, post up there? What is that? Just there. So there's no handcuffs? <laughs> no, okay. So, so it's not a sex thing? <laughs> it is not a Which sex thing. It's a really thing. weird thing no. to have in the bed. I know. So you stand there. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Well. <laughs> Welcome shit. to the Cambridge Hotel. Thank you. Christ almighty. I, I am not going to forget this day in a hurry. Horrible linen. Rough and nasty. Holes. Look at that. And the bed doesn't even fit the base. Honestly, I've seen better linen inside hospitals. Horrible. My bedroom is dated and uncomfortable. How could anyone think this was good enough for paying customers? Bye-bye. Can I meet the owners? Yes, I'll be right back with the owners. Look how dead they are. Gordon. <laughs> This is Tina and John Tina. Imhoff. I'm nice Tina. to see you. Nice to Gordon. see you. Nice to meet you, sir, John. Likewise, good to see you both. It's quite amazing when you drive up and you see this sort of statue of the building. It's... Yes, sir. Isn't it beautiful? It's stunning until we get inside. <gasps> Hotel experience prior to this was what? Very, very little. I mean, none. I was. No, none. I... None. So, year one, what was the profit? We lost about $350,000 the first year. Year two? $250,000. Profit? Loss. Loss. So, we're in for $600,000. Within 24 months of business, who's funding this? Well, um, my mom and dad have Us. put in several hundred thousand dollars. Wow. Um, our children. Our children. Your children. Yes. Yes. Shay has put about $25,000 on credit cards. Shay is your... The oldest daughter. Oldest. Your oldest daughter, right. It's a chef's um, significant other. OK. And so my youngest daughter uh, just lent us $10,000. Your youngest daughter. She's in college. Was your house on the line next? Yes, it is up for sale. And we would live here. We would move on to the third floor. Where do you draw the line and say, stop, this is not working? You're standing there like proud cock, very confident, very happy, and like nothing's gone wrong, but taking money from your daughter that hasn't even started I would one never foot ask her. on the path of her career? I believed that we would be able to turn it around. Oh, no, but John, I'm sorry. Your parents' money, your family's money, your daughter's money. I, I do have a positive attitude. There's a difference between sounding positive and sounding full of crap. He doesn't know me, and, and he doesn't know the situation. I'm a military guy. I'm not going to take Chef Ramsay's bullshit. I've just met the owners of the struggling Cambridge Hotel and discovered they've borrowed money from their kids to stay open. I, I do have a positive attitude. There's a difference between sounding positive and sounding full of crap. Unbelievable. Tina, how do you manage? I don't know how I manage. And I was very close to running away several times. Wow. Seriously? Unreal. Thank you. I've been frustrated for years with him not listening to me. When somebody doesn't listen to you for a while, you just give up. What is it about John that's driven his wife and potential guests away? I need to watch the general in action. What are you doing with a Hoover? Welcome. Nice to see you. Sorry about the uh, owner walking through with a Hoover. Are you joining us for a sleepover or are you joining us for dinner? Dinner. Excellent. Damn it. Kim, so tell me I help you. John keeps himself constantly busy, but he's busy doing all the wrong things. His non-stop fussing and fidgeting is killing the hotel's atmosphere. What's he doing? Oh, my God. The tables in the bar might be clean, but I've got an eerie feeling the food's going to be filthy. Only one way to find out. 
Hello, sir. How are you? Good. My name's Philip. I'll be your server. Come on. Thank you. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> so am I. <laughs> um, what would you recommend? Well, the soup du jour today is a uh, vegetarian lentil. Vegetarian lentil? Yep. And what was the soup du jour yesterday? It was also the vegetarian lentil. Oh, so soup every two days? Uh, actually, it's longer than two days. Uh, um, I'll go for the pork and beans. Duck comfy? Yeah. Um, pile of mode. Okay. Okay, I think we're done. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chef. Thank you. Chef, order's up. Okay, thank you. Get them going, brother. Get them going. I think that Gordon is going to love the food. Chef Rich is great. We put out excellent food. Hey, Chef. Wow, look at that. This is the pork and beans. Holy mackerel. <laughs> It's cold in the middle. Both of you, yeah? Just touch that meat there, please. Ice you know cold. Saying? Touch that. Ice I mean, cold. I can see why we've got RIP on the front of the fucking reception. Those are two medium rares, right? Scooter, chuck them in the oven, please. Chef, ice cold in the middle. Tell them it's a sous vide product. We cook it to order. It disappoints me a little bit that we are boiling bags, putting stuff in the microwave. I wish we could actually cook with fresher food. Your duck on feet. And Chef said the pork and beans was a sous vide product and it's cooked to order. Sous vide? Oh, cooked in a bag? Yes. They're frozen. Frozen? Yes. And this plate that's frozen? I, I think that's a sous vide product as well. Do we have anything that is homemade? Are the apple pies made here? The apple pies are made here. Okay. Can you hurry with the desserts, please? Sure, thank, thank you. So far, everything has been terrible. Surely the hotel's signature dish is going to be better. How's the apple pie? Tell them we don't want to complain anymore. I'm sorry, but this is the home of apple pie a la mode. But if it's the home of apple pie a la mode, it should be really badass. Stay away from me. It looks like it was vomit on the top of it. I'm bringing it home for my daughter. Okay. Wow. Pie a la mode, Gordon? So this is it. This is the That is the famed. pie a la mode. Shit, this plate is absolutely roasting in the center. Has it been microwaved? It has. The apples are raw. If there's one thing I was expecting was a decent apple pie, and that is gross. I need to find out who's responsible for the terrible food here. Hello. If Chef Ramsay criticizes Chef's food... Where is the... where is Chef? I think Rich will blow up because Rich does take things personally. Uh, I don't know where to start, to be honest. What? the fuck is going on? Well, tell me what you, what you don't like. Can you be a little bit more constructive? Shall we start from the pork and beans? Stone fucking cold. It's a sous vide product. So you don't even cook that? No, it's sous vide. No. And can you cook? Yes. So why buy that in? Uh, price? You buy a store-bought, frozen piece of pork, boiled in a bag, and serve it to me stone cold in the center. You're not even cooking. So you're just too lazy to do it? That's not true. I am not lazy. This menu could be run now without you being here. Yes, it's the way I designed it. It's the way you designed it. So you are lazy, then? I'm not lazy. If Gordon calls me lazy one more time, it could cause a problem. Might be going back to Britain in a body bag. I just tasted the food at the Cambridge Hotel, and it was awful. I think it's because the chef is lazy. But he's adamant he's not. That menu stinks of laziness. I'm not lazy. I'm here 80, 90 hours a week. Yeah. You can't call yourself an executive chef. Come on. Do you know it's store bored? I did. Why would you employ a chef that two thirds of the menu is store bored? I, I think Gordon believes that I'm incompetent in running a hotel, but what I'm doing is right. Your hotel became famous for this apple pie, right? And this is the dish that is trying to stop your house being put up for sale to keep this place going. But I'm just, what I'm trying to say is there are so many basics wrong. I could fucking cry. I could seriously cry. I could cry too. And look at the apples. Look, the apples are raw, not even baked. And I could scream when I see that. I'm this dish was invented here. And there's thousands of restaurants across the globe that have copied what you originated. Have you any idea how lucky you are? And it resolves to that. Soggy, undercooked, soaking wet, piss pie. Can I have a quick word with you for sure. two seconds, please? I'm struggling to understand what's going on here. I need to hear a woman's perspective. John is smart in what he does as a lawyer. Mm -hmm. He's awful here. 
I can't get it in his head. But between the two of them, they're about to take your fucking house down. Him and John go back and forth. When I give suggestions, it's pretty much, you know, up, and then it's pushed aside. And then John is making decisions. You're about to lose your house. I know. And he says, we are going until I haven't got another penny to put in it. He's never run a business before. No, no. And he's never done anything in his life but be a lawyer and a soldier. That is it. He may have won lots of battles, but he's fucking definitely losing this war, let me tell you. Finally, a stranger is seeing what I've been seeing. And I'm hoping that John is going to take something from this and either we're going to make it go or we're going to shut it up. I've seen about as much as I can stand at this hotel. The outdated rooms, the cheap linens, and the prepackaged food. How have things got this bad? I've got to get some answers. What's wrong with this place and who's to blame? The problem is here is that we have to ask to do something. We're not allowed to make a decision. We're not yeah. allowed to make a General decision. General manager, executive chef. No. We have to run everything, everything. through John. Make sure everything. What? We have we to can't have make meetings. A John's a lawyer. And so why do you have to ask someone that doesn't know how to run a fucking bath, let alone That's a hotel? What he but he took over more control. That's when I put up my hands. Okay, you want to run it? You run it. It's fucking soulless. It's littered with shit antiques that are broken. It's got horrendous pictures all over the fucking place. Disgusting rooms. Food that comes out of a fucking bag. I'm, I don't control any of that stuff. I'm not making decisions. I told Rich that I thought we should cut our food costs. Have you got the respect from the owners to do your job properly, yes or no? No. Rich, I have absolutely... Can you talk? I definitely do not make the decisions that I think I should be able to, though. And she's telling you that. And that's what the problem is. It's not the fucking ghost, John, that's scaring the regulars away. It's you. A chef needs to be a fucking chef, and a general manager needs to general manage. I'm not a micromanager. When we first started this place, and the, the ideas I had were all shot, shot down, that's the kind of stuff. Now it's coming out. You've handicapped the chef, the general manager's dysfunctional, and you're calling all the fucking shots. I'm not calling the shots. You're a lethal weapon. Well, you, you may think that. No, I don't think that. I fucking know that. No, you just heard from your wife, your general manager, your chef. That I'm controlling. Over control. I... You're like a little fucking Hitler around here. And if you don't stop doing what you're doing, you'll lose your family and the business. I finally got to the truth at the Cambridge Hotel. You're like a little fucking Hitler around here. The place is sinking because John, the owner's meddling ways, have made everyone's jobs impossible. I'm not a micromanager. They're not puppets. They're your team. And if you don't stop doing what you're doing, you'll lose your family and the business. Working out, Your Honor. I'm going to bed. Good night. This is all stuff that I've been trying to get across to John for 20 years. Yes, ma'am. Mm. What's the matter? Seriously? Yeah. What's the matter? With you right now. You have a headache again? Or... <sighs> I've had it. I have had it. I was feeling squashed. And I don't have to feel that way anymore. I'm not going to feel that way anymore. Bedtime, and I'm not looking forward to sleeping in a haunted room. I've never seen such a delusional owner and staff that are so desperate to do their jobs. And now I've got to sleep in this. Christ almighty. Oh, fuck. What was that? This bed is so uncomfy. What is that noise on the stairs? I had a sleepless night, and believe me, it wasn't a ghost that kept me awake. It was something far more frightening. Time to give John and Tina a wake-up call. After you, please. Hi, guys. Good. Hi. Hi. These are the guests that have been staying in the hotel. Um, I've asked them uh, in my room this morning to help you understand how difficult it is 
has become for guests to actually stay here. Who would like to go first? I took a shower this morning and used a, what I thought was a clean towel, and there was hair in the towel. Mm. Yeah. The bed yeah. itself was actually very uncomfortable. Yeah. 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 yeah, we left our room last night and couldn't lock our door, so we had to leave our hotel room door unlocked. Hand on hearts, how many of you would return here? No. no. The way no. 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 Anyone? Mm. Not unless yeah. you pay me to stay here. John and Tina, are you aware of so many problems inside these rooms? Some of them we are aware of. Yes. Some, of, some of them, yeah. What I'm more pissed off about than anything is that last night I went downstairs. In fact, let me show you. It's easier if I do it this way. I forgot my toothbrush. I went down to the car. And I cannot believe this. Just watch carefully. I went outside. So, stepped down the stairs. And all of a sudden, damn. I've locked myself out. I've got no keys to get back in. The bloody front door is not locked at night. No. Yeah, we yeah, even even night night night. This morning. Now, there's no night porter. There's no security. And then, shock horror. I went behind the reception desk, and every one of your keys is hanging, replicated, in the pigeon box. Uh, <laughs> Duplicate key for every room. Oh, my God. Credit card details, personal cell numbers, it's all there. That's, yeah, really, that's, that's really scary. That, that's scary to that's think scary. about. It. Why is the door not locked? There's no good reason. So you we have, we haven't up. locked it in a long time, though. No, about two years. In this community, you have eight major burglaries within the last 12 months. Three registered sex offenders locally in this community. I mean, how does that make you feel that we were sleeping in this hotel last night and each and every one of us was vulnerable? Yeah, I think it's yeah, that's, not, that's not OK. So irresponsible. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Um, thank can, you I, can you stay here with me? And uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. thank you. Thank you. John and Tina have broken the first law of hospitality. Keep your guests safe. John's so busy interfering with other people's jobs, he's lost sight of what really matters. I'm not joking around on the burglaries, oh, I, the sex I, offenders. I know, I know. Your I, reputation could be over in seconds on one incident in this hotel. Because you're not going to walk around this town as a prosecutor, a chief lawyer, and then be responsible for a serious rape taking in place inside here. Wake up. You're running a business, not a courtroom. And they're here for an experience. Not a fucking sentence. Sell the place, because you're not fit to run it. Sell it, because this is madness. Sell it, and keep your house. <sighs> it's not worth it. I've just discovered that John has lost sight of the big picture at the hotel. The bloody front door is not locked at night, and his incompetence uh, is putting uh, the guest's safety in jeopardy. That's not OK. If John doesn't change his interfering ways, he and Tina will lose their home and be forced to live on the hotel's top floor. It's time to find out what it's like up there. Hello? Anyone there? Hello? It's like someone. Oh, shit. Bloody hell. Who in the hell would put this here? This really is hotel hell. Oh, my God. What happened to our hands? This place is genuinely disturbing. Freaky. That top floor's no place to live. But I've got a plan. If I force John to see how different things could be here, maybe he'll get the message. So I'm going to need Brittany's help. If we can prove to John and Tina, if you take charge and you hold those reins, that you can make money mm -hmm. for this hotel, trust me, they back off and you step up. Mm -hmm. OK? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I hear it. 
I'm hoping to prove to John that it can be busy, it can be fun here. Tonight, we are serving. We are doing a bar night. Oh my God, this is terrible. We're not a rowdy kid doing shots, going crazy bar. It's a party, party, party. We're gonna do drink specials. We can get people in the rooms. A ladies' night tonight. Have to pack the place. Thanks. Bye. This is the first step to change. As last-minute preparations take place in the bar and the kitchen, there's a new energy in the hotel. This is Chef Richie's chance to prove he can cook with fresh ingredients. Nothing out of a bag. Please, no preheated. All fresh, yeah. All fresh. Great, Rich. It's your responsibility to teach these guys how to cook. Absolutely. Not to reheat. Is that right, Scoot? Yeah. Yeah? Absolutely. He's just started culinary school. Oh, good man. And who inspired you to be a chef? I had relatives everywhere pushing me to join the culinary field because I wasn't physically able to do any other things, like sports and stuff. Yeah. What's the disability? I've had two heart surgeries and two back surgeries. How old are you? 19. Yeah, you move fast. That's a big asset. And you haven't been taught properly yet, have you? No. That's incredible. So what do you want to be when you grow up? Um, I would like to have my own bakery and uh, be a professional executive pastry chef. Wow. We're ready to roll. Brittany has gotten the word out that she's in charge tonight, and people are flocking into the hotel. There you go. Okay, let me ring them up. Ladies' night is going really well tonight. There's a mixed crowd of ages here, and everyone hanging out together and having fun. What can I do to help you? Nothing. Get out. 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 Right. Night's going great, but I don't think John quite understands how important nights like this are because I don't think this guy gets the message. John, I want to show you something. Come with me. That thing spooks me every time I come in here. Here's the situation. Downstairs, currently, there's a buzz, and that got put together by your general manager, Brittany. That's her vision. But if you carry on running the Cambridge the way you have been, this is what you're going to have. This is what's your destiny, this, on your own. So stay up here and sort of enjoy your surroundings. I'll come and get you when I'm ready. All right. He's so wrong, he has no clue. And I'm, I'm thinking, when he comes back up, he's going to ask me what did I learn, and I'm going to say to him, I really didn't learn anything. Plot. Damn it. I've locked John, the hotel's interfering owner, on the top floor. I need to demonstrate to him how well the hotel can run without him. I'm not happy sitting there waiting because I know my guests are downstairs having a party and I kind of felt that I needed to be downstairs. Gordon wants me to sit up here and, and, you know, and think that he's all right about all this stuff and damn it, he's wrong. Talk about me being a control freak. With ladies night in full swing, chef's fiance and John and Tina's daughter Shay arrives to join in the fun. I think she's my last chance of getting through to John. Hi, Shay. Hey, how are you? You've got one minute? 30 seconds, please. Excuse me. Thank you. Time's running out for your dad, for your mother, yeah. and for their house. I can't get through to your father. I asked him to go upstairs and just sit and ponder and, and think that this is your future. And if you think he's ready to change, by all means, bring him down. And if he's not, I don't care. Keep him out of there and keep him up there. Hey, Pops. Hey, Shay. What's going on? I'm just up here, uh, sitting down and waiting. Waiting. To go back downstairs. I think the point, um, was to try and visualize what could potentially be the future. Oh, uh, no, I've been doing a lot of thinking, too. Okay. Yeah, I've been doing a lot of thinking. I thought my role was about the same all along. I feel like it's changed a lot. And I think a lot of it is a fear of trusting. You don't have to be here all the time. When was the last time you sat down at home and had a dinner with mom? You know? Yeah, I feel guilty when I'm not here. 
Do you know what's going on downstairs? No. It's awesome. There is a restaurant full of people that are thoroughly enjoying themselves. It's hopping. And it's working without you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting it, OK? I mean, I'm, um, it's going to be tough for me to back off of the working. I think it's important for you. I think it's important for you and mom. Yeah, you're making good points, Shay. I think you would be able to spend more time with your granddaughter. Oh, I'd love that. It's possible. You don't want this to be your future. No. You don't want to live here. No, I don't. You have to commit to change. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I understand. If mom will uh, put up with me being home more. <laughs> love you. I love you too, Shay. Oh. I've, I, it's an epiphany. I've, I've just now realized my control is what dra is dragging the hotel down. Now I need to make a change um, in order for my personal life to improve and for my business to get better. Oh, good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Tonight has been a real success. Seeing Brittany in charge and Rich cooking fresh food gives me real hope. But is John capable of letting go? My goodness, it feels weird. It's sounding so quiet now, right? Uh, well done. Behind the bar, well done in the kitchen. Scooter, well done. Ladies, great. I mean, you couldn't get a, a seat at the bar within 20 minutes. That's how it should be. How much do we take? It's under $1,400 in two hours. $1,400. In two hours, we made more than the last four Wednesdays or four Thursdays combined. John. You spent the majority of the night upstairs. How was your night? It was in a very good night, actually. In what way? Um, my daughter, Shay, um, opened my eyes to some things. I'm here every night because I feel that I need to be here. That That is my role as the owner, to wave the flag as a military term. But when, I, when it came from Shay, as she said, you know, Dad, <clears throat> I know how hard you work. And, and I promised I wasn't going to tear up. And uh, this all happened without me. You trust your subordinates. As a commander, the most important person you have are your NCOs. And Chef and Brittany are my NCOs. I can't tell you how good it is to hear that, because you're a fucking tough nut to crack. Because <laughs> we have got one hell of a day tomorrow. But I need everybody, everybody at their best. Uh, good job. Thank well you. done. Thank you. Good night. Great job. Thank good you. night. Thank you. What a day. I'm hoping that John has finally got that message, but is it all lawyer crap? Tomorrow we'll definitely find out. Oh, God. It's freezing. Coming up, I drag the Cambridge Hotel into the 21st century, and one of the hotel staff gets some shocking news. My design team worked all night to bring the hotel into the 21st century. Now it's time to reveal the new Cambridge Hotel to the staff. Good morning. Good morning. John, how are you feeling? I can't wait to see what you've done in there. Right, you ready to go in? Yes! The only way we're getting in is with this, a key. Let's go. Let's go. The door is locked, so your guests can sleep safe and sound. Come in. Unlocks, good, good. Right, come upstairs. I'm hoping you're going to love my room. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Oh, my god. Look at the floor. Wow. Oh. Taking the carpet out and putting that flooring in absolutely transformed it. The wallpaper was expensive. In order to enhance it, we worked with it. So we've got the back drapes above yes. the bed. Yes. We have this amazing new floor. Yes. Perfect furniture that fits the room. We've upgraded every room with brand new linen and towels. $75,000 worth of linen. Oh my god. My god. We could have never afforded that. That is so wonderful. I feel like kind of like a kid that comes down Christmas morning and there's so many things under the tree that yeah. you're you're in overload. I can't really comprehend everything yet. I mean, I'm just kind of looking at it saying, "Wow." Ready for one more room? Oh my, oh my god, I don't know if I can take it. Wow. <gasps> wow. Wow. <laughs> Wow. 
And I can't wait to actually show a guest upstairs to a room. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, there's one more little thing I want to show you downstairs. Come with me, please. In the 1890s, the Cambridge Hotel gave birth to world-famous Piler Mode. And I think that dish can put the hotel back on the map today. Something I thought was a huge missed opportunity. I've been working on a, an amazing, very special apple pie recipe that I'm going to give to you that you own and it becomes the best apple pie in America. And on the back of that, we've transformed this room through here to the Alamode room. Come through. Oh, my God. Morning, everybody. How are we? <laughs> we can sell our own pie. That's homemade that Gordon is giving us his recipe for. Oh, my God. This hotel invented pie Alamode. And the ice cream is made fresh here with a brand new ice cream maker and it's <laughs> locally <laughs> sourced cream. I can't wait to try it. I know. <laughs> come with me, please. Hey, enjoy the apple pie. Nice to see you. Please, come through. Beautiful pile of mode. Dig in, dig in. Come on, guys. If anybody wants this, you better get on it. Oh, my God, that's awesome. The world-famous Cambridge Hotel apple pie a la mode. That is the best crust I have ever had on a pie. Welcome to the Cambridge Hotel. We now have the best apple pie a la mode in, I'd say, the world. People are going to be excited. Mm. Scoot, what do you think, bud? I'm shocked. You're shocked? Are you happy? <laughs> I don't know what to say. Oh, mate, don't get upset, buddy. What's the matter? I'm so happy. Oh, good. I'm happy too as well. You know that. OK? Thank Come on, you. buddy. Seeing how much he changed the hotel was very overwhelming. Uh, I can feel a change. I'm a lot more inspired. Right now, I feel like I can accomplish anything in the kitchen. I am proud now. There's a new pride in me to say, this is where I work. Time to go. I never thought I'd say this, but I'm actually quite sad to leave this place because no longer is John in denial. He can now stand back and watch his team run the Cambridge properly. As I'm getting ready to leave, guests are starting to arrive at the new hotel. Hello. Welcome, guys. How are you? And the biggest change of all is not the new decor, it's the fact the guests are loving it at the Cambridge. <laughs> this is beautiful. The restaurant is buzzing. The Cambridge burger with the pork belly. Guests are enjoying the new home-cooked menu that are put together with Chef Rich. Okay. Good. Yeah. yeah. And you better save room for the pie, because it's okay. totally different. Who's trying the apple pie? And the hotel's signature dish, pile mode is a big hit. Uh, that ice cream is worth driving for. <laughs> Fantastic. Great buzz in there. I mean, it's electric, and it's the sound of the new Cambridge Hotel. My only hope now is that they keep it up and keep those customers excited, because when it's like that, it's phenomenal. Is that good? Can I have a bite? I think tonight went incredibly well. The, the fact that I could stay and, and sit with Shay and Addison and Bunk, it was really, really nice. Wow. <laughs> to see you smiling is incredible. You know that. Yeah. You light this place up. But I don't want you living here. No, I'm not. I don't want to live here. I do not want you living here. I won't live here. OK. Tell him that. I'm not living here. I hear you. I'll give him a hug. He deserves one. <laughs> um, <laughs> he hasn't interfered tonight. And you sat down and spent time with your granddaughter. I had a blast. Yeah. My job is done, let me tell you. <laughs> no longer RIP. OK. Of the Cambridge. It has a bright future. It's long live the Cambridge. Long right? Live. That's absolutely right. Good night, my darling. Before Gordon came, no. I didn't know where to go anymore with the hotel. And getting Gordon here and having him show us what the problem was, now I can see that the things can be fixed. I will tell you. OK. Colin Powell says optimism is a force multiplier. <laughs> I'm optimistic. <laughs> Stay optimistic, but don't get too involved, OK? OK. Uh, look after yourselves. Okay. Will, thank you very much, sir. Stay together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Before I leave this place, there's one more person I want to talk to. Bono, big man. So you've got three more years left at college, right? About four. OK, hear me out, OK? I want you to keep in touch with me. OK. I'm going to give you my email address, because okay. I want to finance those next four years in college personally and help you, 
okay? Do it for you. And keep that dream alive one day of owning your bakery. And then when your bakery's open, all I want back is a loaf of bread. Okay? It's pretty unbelievable that he is going to be able to finance my four years of school. Well done. Good job. Thank you so much. Well done. Can't wait to finish school and pay him off for that big loaf of bread. You have an amazing pair of hands and a lovely smile. Don't stop, OK? Got it. And God help you if you fail that college. Thank you. You won't, though. I know you won't. Well done. Thank you so okay? much. When I go to school, I'm going to push myself 200 times harder. I'm going to show Gorin what I can do and how fast I can do it. Good night. Thank you. Well Thank done. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Take care. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Oh, good job, uh -huh. man. Awesome job. Hey, you deserve it. <laughs> Definitely. What a week. What a place. And now, whenever I see Alamode, I know where it started. Previously on Hotel Hell, I found out the upscale Juniper Hill Inn in Windsor, Vermont, is bleeding money. So you're losing over $200,000 a year? We're in trouble. And it's because the owners have spent a fortune to make this place look like an art museum. I've always thought that you should live with nice things if you can afford them. Treating it like their own private country club. <laughs> I quickly realised the rooms were vacant because Robert and Ari have alienated themselves from the town. And the inn's appearance is completely deceiving. What is that smell? It smells like shit. It's like someone's shot under the bed. And instead of working with their employees... Excuse me. Bragging about Excuse me. Else. Excuse me. Excuse me. I am the boss. His face is fucked. They're oppressing him like indentured servants. I'm barely surviving, financially and emotionally. I'd be very careful about coming down on me too hard. And communication is almost non-existent. Unless you fucking ask, how are you supposed to fucking know? Well, I have been asking. I said, where's this chicken? So ask, ask him again! And what's worse, I was completely shocked to learn that the staff never get paid on time. Like pulling teeth to get my paycheck. You don't get paid? It takes forever to get my paycheck, and when I do, it's usually something's left out. And when I confronted Robert and Ari in front of everyone, all I got was excuses. I don't have a secretary, Gordon. I'm sorry. Are you always this pathetic? They don't have to work here. How dare you? Go on, then, you pompous fuck. Don't talk to me like that. You still haven't got it that this place is sinking. So far, my stay at Vermont's Juniper Hill Inn has been shocking. Yeah, but it smells like shit. And the root of the problem is beginning to show. You don't get paid? I've seen with my own eyes how poorly this place is run. But now I need to see what happens to the bottom line. <laughs> when Robert and Ari use Juniper Hill as their own private playground, entertaining all their friends. I'm hoping estate manager Ryan can help me. A lot of the staff are telling me their um, friends pop up from Manhattan and come and spend weekends and sit, drink, and be merry. Are these guys actually paying? Uh, no. Robert had a slew of friends come and stay for free and eat for free for weeks at a time, and that's why they've been losing money since I've been here. What do the colors mean? Help me understand that. Green means they're paid in full. Red means they have not paid. Oh, my god. I have 50 room nights. That's between November and December. Well, just two average, months. They're $200 a night. But that's... It's like $10,000 in revenue. That's $10,000. They're running it in almost a like a clubhouse, almost like they're trying to buy friends. And Robert prides himself as the superior business person. Robert walks around like he's the king, and that everybody hears a bunch of hicks. This is insane. I mean, this is like a private club for him. He's worked with the servers before and accepted a portion of the tips. Oh, my god. Fucking hell. He's taking their bloody tips. And this guy is mad. I can't believe this. He doesn't pay them, and then he takes their tips. I've got to talk to him. How are we? Barbara, how are you today? Good. And just out of interest, is it true that Robert takes a percentage of the tips? Yes. He does? Yeah. And what percentage of tips does he take? What we get. He gets the same as you? Yeah. 
It's the really hard to keep track of the tips. I it, the, the bookkeeping it, the, yeah, it doesn't. It, it seems inconsistent. But why is he touching the tips? He because did the same thing for New Year's. They felt that because they needed to cover part of the band, that they took the tips off. A of uh, tip. That's why we don't make anything here. An owner has no right to take the staff's tips. And with all the room and food comps Robert is giving his friends, it's no wonder the inn is struggling. The staff shouldn't be subsidising the inn so Robert and his friends get to live the high life for free. It's sickening. I have to confront him and figure out this nonsense. I just had a look round and I just... I, I am flabbergasted. I'm going to be really frank and I'm going to try to stay so calm. But if I smell BS that you start going into denial, I'm going to let rip again. I studied your reservations. Last November, December, 49 rooms were given out for free. And on top of that, they ate, they drank. For nothing. I'm not even tipping. And I'm just, the fuck are you doing? Tell me why. I thought I needed to have somebody here. Rather than having two other guests in the hotel all by themselves, to have more energy. You're no, making it worse. Not only do your friends not leave tips, but when people do tip the staff, you take a share. On nights that I work, I did take tips. That is disgusting. Why do you think you are right to that? I have tried to work with my staff to teach them that this is the way I want service done. You're so bad. I take a percentage of the tips based on the amount of work that I do. Yeah. And who does the books on those tips? Uh, Ari. <laughs> But if I'm doing their job and I can't get it across to them... You're the owner. You're not the head bus boy. You're not the barman. You're the fucking owner. What I was saying wasn't getting through. So the psychology was that if I started to take tips, they would maybe pay attention to that. That is insane. It's the worst management model I've ever heard in my entire life. Do you honestly need a 70-year-old lady's tips? No. So 15, 20 grand's worth of complimentary rooms in food? in a two-month period. I'm just, well, it doesn't I, make sense. I have to tell you that the reason Please. I did that was because I thought that they would at least tip my staff. But they didn't tip your staff. Sorry to piss on your bonfire. Well, then I will call my friends and I will tell them, look, what happened? You haven't got the fucking balls to call your friends and ask them to leave a tip. Yes, I do. Call them, then. and ask them, I thought at least, out of generosity, you would have left a couple of hundred dollars tip for the team. Hello? Dana? Yeah? It's Robert. You stayed here recently, and um, I was under the impression that you and Greg left a tip. Did you leave a no, tip? I left money with you. Uh, no, 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 okay. but you said you were going to send additional tip. You mean? I think my time's done here. That was one of the things that I was hoping you had done. I left the no, money no, no. with you. Well, wait a minute. There's others to call, too. Gordon. Oh, dear. Gordon has left. He thinks I'm stealing my staff's tips. Unbelievable. Joke. Hey, Ray, it's Robert. Did you tip the staff? Because they're telling people that they haven't been tipped. I left the money with you. Oh, so I need to do that. I, I have somehow lost that. Fucking idiot. Gordon left, thinking I'm a liar. I feel as if I'm, I'm at the end of my rope. I mean, I'm gonna lose everything. I'm gonna have to start all over again if this doesn't work, and I just don't seem that I can, can do it anymore. <laughs> no, I can't do it. just left Juniper Hill after catching Robert in a lie about his staff getting tips. I was under the impression that you and Greg left a tip. It, did you leave a tip? Well, I left the money with you. The guy is maddening, and I don't know if I've got it in me to help fix the place. I'm so pissed off with Robert right now. Honestly, I cannot stand any more of his bloody lies. This guy doesn't deserve the team that is in his hotel. He treats everyone so badly. When you're in your fucking kitchen all day long and you're on the internet instead of actually trying to perfect a menu... He doesn't even pay them properly. I had to wait five weeks before I got a paycheck. I work very long days yeah. and I haven't been paid in three weeks. How can someone so rich not pay the people he employs? That's something I simply won't stand for. 
As angry as I am, I feel I have to help the staff get paid. And I have an idea of just how to do it. I'm going to hire a team of white club movers to assemble all of Robert's most valuable antiques from the storage units, the basement and around the inn. I'm hoping when confronted with all the money he's wasted, I can convince Robert to sell some of his vast collection to pay his staff. If this is going to work, I must stay calm while I talk to Robert. Um... I've come back. Not for you, but for the staff. They deserve better. We're losing on average fifteen to $20,000 a month. And we are short. But you have a serious hobby of sort of an art collector, an art dealer. I mean, you could open a museum. How many pieces do you have in there? Oh, my god. Hundreds. What are we talking about? Everything collectively. All those beautiful oil paintings, the expensive stuff. At a suitable auction, um, maybe $300,000. $300,000. And that would supplement you for the next 12 months, 18 months? Yes, that would certainly get us through. That would get us through two years. Um, right. There's something I want you to see. Yeah. Okay. I'd like you to come with me, please. If there's one thing we need right now, is an injection of funds. Wow. Robert, no man alive needs this much stuff. Walking in, it was shocking. Now, antiques, oil paintings, silverware. Does it not, I mean, frustrate you that we're sat with all this, and yet we can't pay our staff properly? There's someone I'd like you to meet. She's the head auctioneer at Bonhams in Boston. Amy, good morning. Good morning, Gordon. Uh, nice to see you. Gordon, great to see you. Likewise, thank you so much for coming. Um, we're in the shit, basically, and this stuff needs to go. We need to raise as much money as possible. So what's the best price we can get for all this stuff? What you have here doesn't read as a collection to me. It's kind of an accumulation. A lot of copies of things, or if they are right. of the period that they're supposed to be, there's some condition issues. Um, I would say about 25,000. Say that again? 25,000. $25,000. All this? All this. Amy's opinion on our, our things was shocking. And I can't really believe that. And the painting? The painting is a copy. And not a good one, I'm afraid. How much is that worth? I can't imagine what someone would pay for it. It's, it's really very low value. Wow. Robert, I thought you said it was expensive, 18th century. Well, it's dated. I dated 17th century. It is, but it's not actually of that period at all. I'm sorry. Did you know that was a copy? I did not know that that was a copy. Lots of copies. Reproductions. Reproductions. We were hoping in the ballpark of three to 400,000. 25 grand for everything. Yeah. That won't even get us through the next five weeks. Even all this amazing silverware. I put $100 on everything on this table. $100? What about this? First period, this is Sheffield. Yeah, it's plate. What about this? 175 bucks. Th those are Baccarat candlesticks? They just don't bring very much at auction, I'm afraid. Uh, is this the kind of collection that you'd be willing to sell at Bonhams? Would you take the whole lot? No, we wouldn't. Wow. We would okay. have to say no. We're floating as if we've got this asset full of three or $400,000 worth of antiques. We haven't, and we're distracted with the bits of crap in here. It was a wake-up call. Thank you, that's sure. the start. My pleasure. I appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you. It means that we don't have the backup that we thought we had. We've paid more money for fucking storage than they're worth. Than they're worth. Does that not bring it home a little bit earlier that you need to be an innkeeper, not a part-time antiques dealer? Because you fooled me. You gave me the tour, and I thought, wow, this guy is, uh, he's got serious cash to burn. But right now, we're even further in the shit than I thought we were. So the pressure intensifies. Yep. You need to focus on fixing the business because that's what's going to generate sufficient funds to keep this place open. And I don't think you quite realize that your staff, they're miserable. They don't like Ari's barking. Excuse me. Bragging about Excuse me. One... I am the boss. You bitching. When you're in your fucking kitchen all day long and you're on the goddamn internet instead of actually trying to perfect a menu. It's not a nice atmosphere for the staff currently. And if they quit, you're fucked. They are staff. 
They're not pigs that live in the fucking basement. If you think that's not the case, and you're that delusional, and you're not prepared to listen to anything I'm saying, you're fucked. Sell the inn, sell this shit in here, and give up. I've just come back to try and save Juniper Hill Inn, and I thought I could use some of the owner's vast array of antiques to get the cash flowing. But I've just discovered... I would say about $25,000. $25,000. All this? All this. That I was wrong. That won't even get us through the next five weeks. With no assets, the challenge to make this place work is bigger than ever. Tomorrow, I have to start the process of change. Before I get stuck in, there's one thing I want to try. You're freezing now. Molly, now it's time to see if I can get through to Robert and Ari. Can I just borrow you for two minutes? I want to show you something. Yes, yeah, both of you together. I'd like you to come up to my uh, room. Thank you. If this place is going to work as a business, Robert and Ari need to hear some home truths oh. about how their paying customers really feel about their precious inn. Um, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for uh, popping into my room. <laughs> How was your stay last night? Well, we didn't know where to go when we walked in, so we walked around and around until we found somebody to help us check in. I was slightly disorientated when I checked in as well. I mean, there's no signs in terms of reception, no. front desk, or bar, or lounge, or... And how were the rooms? I had space heaters to heat the room up. Oh, really? Yeah, three rooms. When I checked the room, it was like a sauna. He sounds aggravated. Raise your hands if you'd come back, please. No, not like it is. Not like it is. There's someone I'd like to hear from who hasn't said anything yet. He is a lead inspector of the diamond collection of hotel and inns across America. In a nutshell, very disappointed. Didn't meet expectations. From the moment I walked in, with no greeting, no check-in area, I was totally lost. And the bar's a joke. Should not even be there, folks. It looks as if it's set up for a wedding. The hospitality is nice, but everything else fails. How do you feel? I don't want my guests to have that experience. You know, our goal is to please people. That's why we're in the in-business. And we've obviously fallen really short. Um, For me, I think that's positive feedback, so I'm grateful entirely. Let me tell you, thank you all. Can I uh, keep you two here, please? Yes. Thank you. The guest feedback please. has certainly been constructive. Thank you. Thank you. And Robert's thank even you. using a word I've never heard from him before. We are sorry. But I'm shocked by Ari's response to the guest complaints. What's the matter with you? Why are you so angry with guests? Why are you running an inn when you're so bitter? You look like you don't give a shit. I'm not saying that I don't like the guests, but uh, if you have ever been an innkeeper, it's 24 seven. No one is more touched by what these people say. Well, Ari is clearly, but... Uh... I would love this to be our, our private home. But I am. It's a lost cause. And Ari does have a different way of dealing sure. with I things. see that. Based on my experience, I would seriously request both of you actually sit down and reconsider whether you should be in this business going forward. It's clear to me that Ari isn't cut out for the hospitality business. And even though Robert now understands how he's let down his guests, he needs to understand that he's also let down his staff and failed to recognize their potential. I've got a plan that will help Robert to see what he's doing wrong and how he can fix things in his kitchen. I've asked Chef Julian to cook three dishes from Robert's expensive old menu and three new dishes of his very own creation. Once he's finished, we're going to pretend I cook the new ones and see what Robert says. Crucially, Julian's dishes are all ones that could be served on a $29 menu, half what Robert currently charges. Look at that. $74, $29. Let's go. Good luck. OK? Yes. I can't wait to see what Robert thinks of Julian's affordable food when he thinks I've cooked it. I asked him to cook a three-course meal. Yeah, he cooked his lamb, his crab cake, and the dessert. That's the $74 version. I cooked the other meal. I got hold of some chicken, some sprouts, and I used the crab and a butterscotch pudding with some caramelized popcorn. $29, that's what those three courses are going to cost. Yeah. Okay. Julian's three new dishes are fantastic and fairly priced. That would go a long way towards bringing guests back through the front door. Now that Robert thinks I've cooked them, I bet he loves them. Talk to me. Excellent. 
Fabulous. And the um, Brussels sprouts are really good too. Mm -hmm. You've actually leafed them and mm -hmm. it's very pretty. Mm. Well, this is a much better value. I've never heard you use that word value. And we could get two for the price of one. That's what we should do. So my menu or Julian's menu? Your menu. My menu. Now, I'm flattered, but there's something I need to tell you. I didn't make any of this. Julian cooked everything. I felt at that very moment that I had done Julian a disservice. Robert, have you got something you'd like to say to your chef, Julian? I'm sorry that I haven't given you the freedom to do what you need to do. I guess I have to eat it and say that I have restricted him from being who he can be, which is, is really difficult. And um, I have to say that this is delicious. Coming up? He's emotionally constipated. Robert has a major decision about his future with Ari. I think he gave up. Now that owner Robert's heard from the guests. Very disappointed. Didn't meet expectations. And sample the kind of affordable, high quality food his chef can cook when given the chance. Excellent. Fabulous. I didn't make any of this. Julian cooked everything. I hope this is all started to sink in with him. Well, how are you feeling? I'm feeling all sorts of things. I mean, there's, of course, fear. But surely hope, too. Your chef's food was amazing. Absolutely. It was an epiphany. I feel regretful that I have come across in the way I have and that I haven't exhibited to my staff the leadership they needed and the compassion that apparently I'm, I must be void of. I think for you to tell them how you're feeling, what you're going to commit to, how important they are for you. I know that this place wouldn't be here without them. And I'm wanting to do everything I can to show them that we can make this work. I'm glad Robert's on a new path. I just hope it's not too late for his staff to learn to trust him again. You are all valuable to me and to Ari and to Juniper Hill. And I fear that we have not always express that. And we want to show you that we are going to make a difference. Sorry for your paychecks being late. Sorry for taking part of the tips. Sorry for not communicating, because that was the reality. And one that I'm not proud of, that we're not proud of, but one that we certainly can correct. And that's what we want to do. The business is short of cash flow. I thought there was a substantial collection of three to four hundred thousand dollars worth of assets. I mean, why don't you explain exactly? In the things that were assembled here, um, they said lucky if we got twenty-five thousand. We are on our ass. It is going to be difficult, and I think Robert has realised the bubbles burst, and he understands the truth to where we are. I think there's a perception that we are these wealthy magnets coming in and lord of the manor sort of things. That's not who we are. You know, I knew there were some um, bad situations here, but I stayed because I want to be here and I want to help him. And uh, I believe what he says. And I'm very proud of you, Robert. You're the man that I've always known and loved. It's, he's coming back. I'm glad to see that, you know, we're facing facts and uh, that's the only way we're going to get out of this. Agreed. Thank you. Ryan, what do you think of what Rob just said? I wanted to stand up and clap. I did too. <laughs> I feel like I'm working for somebody who can actually run a business when I hear things like that that can succeed. I've never seen Robert so serious. This is actually really a life-changing thing for him. And I feel like I want to be part of the changes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The truth's important. It's humbling to have to admit some of the things that haven't gone right. But at the same time, it's energizing to see that people really do care for us and care for Juniper Hill. That is what's going to make us successful. I'm impressed with the way Robert dealt with his staff meeting. I've got real hope that he can make this place work, but he has another lesson to learn. He thinks people aren't spending money at Juniper Hill because of the recession, but I think it's the snobbish atmosphere and the high prices that have kept people away. I'm taking Robert to a fantastic local brewery to show him how a warm welcome can translate into money in the bank. Let's go and have a beer. Let's get in with the locals. Trust me, they won't beat you up. <laughs> 
You are like a fish out of water right now, honestly. <laughs> You're like a vegetarian in the middle of a big steak tartare. Look at you. <laughs> No, no, no. Well, I love the people from our region. The Upper Valley is filled with amazing people. The Juniper Hill is not I filled know. with local people. Wouldn't you welcome this atmosphere? Oh, oh yeah. In your stately house? Absolutely. Everyone is welcome. Stand on there and tell them you need them. Off we go. If I could have your attention, please. I'm Robert. I'm the innkeeper at Juniper Hill Inn. We just want to tell everybody we'd love to have you all up at Juniper Hill Inn. And uh, we need the help right now. So if you can come up and have dinner or just have a drink and just say hi, it would be great. Thank you. Thanks. Well done. If Robert can always be that inviting to the locals, he surely has it in him to be the leader of the inn. When was the last time you brought Ari here for a beer? We haven't been here probably in six months. How was he after you spoke to the team like that? You know, the, the, the interesting thing with Ari is yeah. his exterior is Finnish. You know, he's very stern. stern, but he feels deeply. He can't express it, though, can he? He can't. He's emotionally constipated. I think he gave up. That can't come across to the staff. That can't come across to the customer. So no. you, you've got to almost isolate yourself from that. But he's getting through it. But he's not going to be the face. He's not going to be the ink. No, he's not. But he can provide a phenomenal amount of support behind the scenes. Cheers to that. Coming up. It's fantastic. I show off the new and improved Juniper Hill Inn. Oh my goodness, look at this. But assistant innkeeper Sarah's joy is short lived. I'll be in my room. You look terrible, what's the matter? I'm sick of it, Gordon. It's been a tough week here at Juniper Hill Inn, and owner Robert's pompous ways have been maddening. I don't have a secretary, Gordon, I'm sorry. Are you always this pathetic? But he's finally come off his pedestal to get on the same level as his team. You are all valuable to Juniper Hill, and we want to show you that we are going to make a difference. Overnight, my team has been working on a remarkable transformation, and with relaunch upon us, it's a chance for a fresh start for everyone. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Morning. Let me introduce you to the new Juniper Hill Inn. It's no longer a hangout for the super rich or your mates getting freebies. Yeah, it's now a nice, warm and very welcoming country inn. And trust me, everyone is welcome, whether you're driving up here in a Mercedes or even a pickup truck. <laughs> you ready? Yes. yes we let's are. go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go. Please, come in. Come through. The Great Hall is a beautiful room, but it was hidden by vast amounts of furniture. Oh, my That's goodness. Nice. Look at this. My team have edited the collection and created a feeling of comfort and space. When I walked in the Great Hall, it felt like a different room. Gordon put together this amazing place. It feels comfortable and warm. You have a spacious, gracious, warm reception room. Look at it. Gone is that hideous makeshift bar. Thank you. Gone. Yes, nowhere to go because they have proper signs. Ready to see the dining room? Yes. yes. Come through. Oh, it's it's warm and welcoming. So oh, I love this. No longer feels like your grandmother's parlor. It really is a dining room. It's what you expect from a country inn. You know, it has an identity. Gone are those hideous sofas that <laughs> nobody can sit and eat dinner in. Ari, what do you think? Very nice. Very you nice. like it? Very open. Excellent. I'll show you my bedroom. Okay. Please. <laughs> Everybody else can come too, please. You ready? We're ready. In you go. Do you know what's wrong with this room? Nothing. You don't need to do anything to them. The only thing wrong was the smell in room one, and a plumber has taken care of that. The guest rooms are the absolute highlight of your inn. That meant something, because it meant we were on the right track. We just needed a, a, a better directions. Now, the key to filling this is to charge sensible prices. I would rather have the room sold at Absolutely. a cheaper price and have an 85% occupancy rate across the year. Bring the yes. prices down, fill it, let them enjoy this quality. The stunning bedrooms didn't need changing, but there's one room that did need a significant overhaul in order to bring in much needed cash flow. Now, there's one more little thing I want to show you downstairs. OK. You ready? <laughs> I'm ready. Let's go. Come with me. OK. We need to attract the local community. I'd like to welcome you to the Blue Bar. Whoa. Blue Bar. Oh, look at this flower. Oh, <laughs> oh. oh my goodness. Oh, Ari, are you thrilled? 
The best new local bar in Windsor. Fantastic. This is so great. Walk in and see the people sitting there and the games on the tables and the beautiful drinks. It was very emotional. I loved it. The Blue Bar is exactly what the town of Windsor, Vermont and Juniper Hill Inn need. I'm hoping it will be popular, especially on a day like today, when the inn hosts its first ever Sunday lunch service. The staff are all getting ready for the arrival of their lunch guests. Five, six, seven, eight. So you've got four tables each. But while everybody else is busy, Ari seems lost and needs reminding of his role here at the inn. I'm here. Oh, jeez. Right. <laughs> Okay. What I had to go the doing? other way. Are you in? Are you out? Are you doing the checks? What are you doing? I was checking in people. You're That's... checking in. But I thought that was the gracious. I thought you were checking in people. Yeah. You want to check them in and Shut take up. them up? Uh, That'll be I, great. Would you Thanks. be so kind? Just two yes. seconds. I'm so sorry. Would you continue that? Of course. Can I just have you for 30 seconds? Yeah, sure. Come this way. I thought you were going to leave the front of the house to Robert. I thought you were going to be the back of the house. No, one thing is that Robert asked me to, to check in people with, uh, because he had to uh, take people to the dining room. <sighs> yeah, I know, but. We have a saying in England. Yes. Too many chefs spoil the broth. You're not a natural innkeeper. Oh, okay. okay. He needs your help. Yes. But yes, behind the scenes. Yes. Explain to Robert that you're going to support him from behind the scenes. Yes. Please. Okay. Sure. Please. I'm going to do that. I think Ari has finally got the picture and understands that he needs to play to his strengths. I really hope that things can continue to improve now. Come on, Sophie. We better remove the dog. She's going to eat the food. Sophie, our poodle, she shouldn't be in there. I mean, it's a, it's a place where we eat. Come on, Sophie. Come on, come, come, come. That's not for you. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, honey. Excuse me. Come on, come on. I take come care on. of the dog, OK? Excuse me. The dog shouldn't be in the bar. He's on the seats eating the food. Really? I am the boss, OK? What Don't ever say? talk to me that way again. Excuse me. Don't ever, and I mean it. I'll be in my room, and I don't need to be yelled at. I'm coming towards the end of my stay at Vermont's Juniper Hill Inn, and I thought we'd turn the corner. But as the inn's first ever Sunday lunch service approaches, assistant innkeeper Sarah has gone missing. Where's Sarah gone? I haven't seen Sarah in about a half an hour. Is she OK? I don't know. You don't know? OK, just asking. Has Sarah gone home? What? Has Sarah gone home? No? The team can't afford to be a man down. I've got to find her. Who is it? It's me, Sarah Gordon. Oh, hi, Gordon. Are you OK? Oh, no. Uh, what? Hold on a second. Dear, oh, dear. Darling, I thought you joined us for lunch. Oh, thanks. I'm not going to. What's the matter? You want to come yeah. in? Yeah, you look terrible. What's the matter? Oh, I'm just really That's upset. Fine. I don't want to get upset. You were with us half an hour ago. Customers are in the bar. I know. My first table's just arrived. I just expect you to be there in terms of you're part of this team. I know, but I, I'm sick of being yelled at by Ari. I'm sick of it, Gordon. When did he yell at you? Just a few minutes ago, because I asked him to take the dog out of the dining room. Naturally. It's his dog, and it's sitting on the bar furniture. Okay. Please come back down. Oh. Buck up and come down. Nobody's ever seen me break down in tears in this inn. It's never happened before. Just come back downstairs. OK. Please? Yeah, I will. Gordon. OK. Yeah, I want to help I don't want to see you upset. And the girls need you down there. They do, and I'm just, I'm just really okay. mad at them. No, well, let me go and have a word with Ari. This is ridiculous. Get yourself ready. The place is full of locals, and they'd love to see you too. OK. Please. At Smiley. Yes? Good yes. Girl. Yes, I'll bounce back. I'm not sure why Ari is snapping at his staff, but it just proves my gut was right about his place being behind the scenes. Ari? Yes? I've just found Sarah upstairs in floods of tears. Everything OK? No, we had a little run-in because we both are very strong people. He snapped at me, and I snapped back. Do you think the dog should be running around in the bar? No, no one there, I guess. The so was she right or wrong? She was right. Would it be appropriate for you to apologise to her? Do you, do you oh, feel yeah. that you're yeah. responsible from behind the scenes? Is there any way we could just, for this first Sunday lunch, sure. try to keep the team together? OK. I think Ari's heart is in the right place, but his tone is all wrong for an innkeeper. He needs to be the power behind the throne. I'm sure this is going to be one of the busiest days yet at Juniper Hill Inn. And I need to remind Chef Julian to make good use of his sous chef Nida if he's going to have any chance of being successful. Julian's proved to Robert and I that he has the talent and the potential in the kitchen. Now he just needs the help to execute. I know you're adamant the fact that you're going to work on your own, but you are not a one-man band, yeah? Yes, Chef. Encourage, entice. Over to the stove. The local community have responded to Robert's invitation, and there's a great atmosphere. As people turn up to check out the bar and sample the new menu I put together with Chef Julian. Tara, nice to see you. Welcome to Juniper Hill. 
Hi, how are you, dear? Nice to see you. As well as new arrivals, the inn has a return guest, Hotel Inspector Steve Talon. His first visit was a disaster. Very disappointed. Didn't meet expectations. From the moment I walked in, with no greeting, I was totally lost. This is Robert and his team's chance to prove to Steve that they've learned their lesson. I hope this time Hello they're there. flawless. How are you, Mr. Talon? Nice to see you. Nice to see you yes. again. Welcome. So this is our new menu. OK, what's going next? Coming up next, we have one trout. The key to this place running smoothly is communication among the entire staff. But Chef Julian still doesn't seem to get that. How long for the first flat iron, please, Nida? Medium rare. Medium rare. Ask her, Julian. Medium rare. Talk to Nida. I don't care what it's about, the fucking weather. I don't care, but talk to her, OK? Come on, you got to talk. I just said, come on. She can put things on a plate for you, just refusing to talk to her. And it's going to be so fucking painful now. I simplified the menu in order to get it so much easier for you. You know that? Yes, chef. And the menu was designed for you to open up and talk, OK? Yes, chef. Look at me. Yes, Look, chef. Broaden your mind out. And all you do is one plate, focus. Next plate, focus. And I just want you to open up a little bit. She's there to help. Thank you. You know what, let me do this. Just help with the skillet, help with the skillet. Fucking hell. Julian! Yes, come here. Fucking hell. What's the matter with you? You've just shut down on me. Now, do you want to give me your jacket and I'll do it for you? No, Chef. It's not difficult. I know, Chef. Can you do this? Open up. Come on. You've just shut down. With Robert working well with the team. OK, thank you so much. And Ari staying out of the way, the bar is bustling. How are you? Welcome. What can I get you to drink? But Chef Julian needs to raise his game and start communicating. If we're going to make today a success. You've just shut down on me. Open up, please. Get it together. Let's go. You'll be at four minutes at that table. So you do one plate, I do one plate. Is that good? All right, so then you get, with the lamb shank, then you get some lamb glaze, which is right here. Julian, nice, much better. Look yes. at me, yes. much better. Yes, Chef. Good. How is everybody out there? Chicken. 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 Wow. The locals are definitely noticing a change it's here. It was wonderful. It's very good. I was very surprised. Perfect. That's what you're saying. It's perfect for me. Great. Time to see if the hotel inspector has to. Oh, Isa. Good to see you again. Good to see you, too. Recognise a few changes? In some ways, I didn't recognise it at all. I really felt so good. What, the uh, entrance hall in terms of...? The total openness, the welcoming, but the signs everywhere. When you walked in, was it warm? Was it right? Oh, it's great warmth. Now I feel it, it has that diamond collection feel. Is that a good job? Nice news. Yeah. Enjoy lunch. Appreciate it. Pork's amazing. OK. Thank you. Try. Thank you. There's a great buzz at the inn. Sir, can I have a second? Yes. I hope that's not all about to change. I'm really busy. I just want to hear that. I'm sorry about what happened. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Okay. I mean, okay. I'm trying to help, Barry, oh, no. and you're, you're snarling yeah. me a lot. Yeah, I'm sorry. This food is affordably priced. It's really, really tasty. And it's nice to know a nice place to send people to get a drink and relax and everything, and that's hard in the area, so that's great. Robert and Ari's communication has improved by leaps and bounds since I've been at the inn. Let's go back. Just for a second. But actions speak louder than words, and I think Robert is starting to understand that. I just wanted to tell you that um, I really appreciate all the extra effort you're giving. Not just this week, but the entire time you've been here. And this is your paycheck, literally, because we know you need it. We wish we had more. We put $100 extra in there for you, just so you have a little bit extra, because we really do appreciate you, Ryan. So, thanks. Thank you very much. You and I are going to bring this back, and Ari's going to join us. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't been that emotionally moved in a long time. I, I feel like it's all been worth it now. I just, I feel like I, it's appreciated. What a week. I think this business is on the road to recovery, and Robert and his team, with Ari in the background, can really make this place work, because once the locals invest in this place, word is going to spread big time. Beautiful. It's time for me to say my goodbyes. But with the crowd enjoying themselves in the bar and loving the great value in the dining room, it's a hard place to leave. I'm really 
good. This is nice comfy. Is, and yeah. we're sharing the lamb shakes. Oh, lamb. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Uh, right, finally. You seem to have got this under control, yes? Yes, Chef. And you're opening up? Yes, Chef. Don't stop talking. Yes, Chef. Communicate. Good job. Thank you, Chef. He might have beat a few people down, but then he brought a few people right back up, and uh, that was necessary. I'm just glad he didn't smack me with a spatula. Ari? Copy. I've come to say goodbye. I was uh, doing Look my after paychecks. Yourself. You're okay. writing paychecks? Yes. Good luck with the place. Okay. It's a business. Absolutely. Look after yourself. Uh -huh. Look after Robert uh -huh. and support him in all the right places. Thank you. Best wishes. We are very grateful for him that he has patience for us. <laughs> because it, it's not uh, easy to restructure molded minds. Look after yourself, yes? Okay. Look after yourself. Okay. Mike, how are you feeling? I'm feeling great. And it seems like you've got this under control. I'm going to keep it under control. Well, the staff doing the job, the bar's functioning, the dining room's functioning. Kitchen's functioning. That's good. That's beautiful. Ari's in the RV. And there are people. And they seem to be having a good time. You're on the track now. We're on track. I've got a little present for you. Stay there. Having Gordon come to Juniper Hill has meant a lot to us. It was harder than hell, but ultimately, I know it's going to do great things for our staff and for our town. This is something that money cannot buy, but this week, you've earned it. Now, the most important thing, please keep it up. This is your side to be part of the amazing setup, the Diamond Collection. Thank you. You deserve this. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Well Safe done. journey home. Well he done. really did awaken me, put a fire in me, and I want him to come back and say, you really did it. That's our goal. Take care. <laughs> bye bye. Whew. What a beautiful day. I can't believe those storage units are still there. If I was Robert, I'd lock Ari in one of them. Ha, ha, ha.